Hello, my name is Gray. And my name is Crystal. And this is Bust the Asian Beauties, a supernatural commentary podcast where I, someone who has seen this show several times, and I, someone who only knows the show through social media, discuss every single episode of Supernatural from start to finish. Also, we are both Asian. So for today's episode, we will be discussing Season 2, Episode 2, Everybody Loves a Clown, written by John Shaban, directed boo. by Phil Sagrisha. Literally also, boo. boo. Bill Sagrisha. Ugh. Bill Sagrisha <sighs> is responsible for the Joe ass shot. Yes, and also the shots where, like, when a little person is on screen, like, it, it shows, like, a height that's, like, Sam and Dean's height, and then it pans down to show the little yep. person, which is, like. <laughs> okay, Phil oh, Sagrisha. Right. <laughs> okay, Phil. Your, Thanks, Phil. Your, um,. Favor has been revoked. Yep. Do not email us, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So before going into this episode, uh, what were your expectations for this one? I knew that this was going to be our first introduction to Joe and Ellen and Ash in the Roadhouse. Uh, and that presumably there'd be a clown. And also since this is right after John's death, we'd probably get Dean beating up them Paula at some point. I didn't really know much else, uh, probably because everything else in the episode, no one wants to know and which has never happened ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the the extraneous stuff is good, but the case, well, I guess the case, is the, the case is the extraneous stuff, so I'm, yes. uh, but the, the case is, whatever, who fucking cares? Who fucking cares? You think? Do you think the case was, like, trying to say something about, like, grief and... How? <laughs> I know! <laughs> like, why didn't they pick an, pick an episode case where, like, grief is front and center or something? Because, like, that's the whole point of the rest of the episode. So why right. this... Why, like... The the driving right. force. I mean, absolutely nothing about it. Maybe the more we talk about it, we'll figure out the relevance yeah. of the case. But as of now, yeah. I don't see it. So I just I think John Chaban just got dumped by a little person. Like that's what I think this is about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> First, we start with the den sequence. Yes, uh, the best part of the episode. Yes, this is the best part of the episode. Like, I don't know the song, but the song starts with, like, you know, guitars, rock music, and then it slows down to just a beat, mm. and the visuals follow suit, and it's actually really fucking entertaining to watch. Yeah. Little did I like... know, this is the peak oh. of the episode, so... Yeah. I think my favorite part was the visual parallels, like, when they were cutting between, like, John thrashing yes. on the floor as Azazel left him and then thrashing while he's the being The defibrillator. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so for the episode itself, we start in Medford, Wisconsin, in a carnival. So we see various circus acts and then a couple of clowns entertaining a girl named Nora. Well, we go around the carnival some more and we see some more circus acts. And then the mother tells Nora that she's bound for her last ride. And then just then, in the corner, we and Nora see a creepy-ass clown. This clown is very creepy. Certified creep. <laughs> she waves hi to the clown and the clown waves back. And Nora points this out to her mom. But when she looks, there's no clown. And then the mom jokes that Nora is trying to scare her dad. And then we go to the car where they're driving, and the clown can be seen on the side of the road, and Nora remarks on it. Back home, Nora lies on her bed, preparing to sleep, and she hears rustling. She goes towards her window and sees the clown in the front yard. So she goes downstairs to let the clown in. And the moment she holds the clown's hand, we see 
the splash screen. So so we don't see the rest of that, right? And at first, yes. I was like, oh, are we gonna do child murder in Supernatural? Right. <laughs> right. I, I, I didn't really connect the dots before, but somebody pointed out to me once that child murder is in media is still taboo. And I was like, wait, mm-hmm. you're right. Like, we don't really see child murder that much. When I saw yeah. this scene, I actually googled whether we see any children get murdered in Supernatural. Like, I know oh, uh, Dean's kid in Season 7, Slice Girls, right. like Emma, yes. gets killed. But she wasn't necessarily in like a 12-year-old and below child's body. Right. I don't think that counts as child murder necessarily. But uh, according to the <laughs> the Redditors in r slash Supernatural... <laughs> There are no child deaths in Supernatural, like at least not on screen. So, yeah, that makes sense. Right, I thought that there was gonna be child murder, but that the screen cut because they didn't like want to actually show the killing. A child just, getting like, murdered. A news article, yeah. Yeah. Okay, you know what? I really thought that there was gonna be a reveal later that the clown creature like had cast some kind of spell on the kids. To make them so friendly towards him. But, like, no. Like, these kids are just seeing a clown standing in their yard and being like, Sure, come in, buddy. Who (laughs) are you children? (laughs) But also, these children are not six years old. Yeah, they're They're like like ten. ten. Yeah. So, the fact that they're letting strangers in. Like, (laughs) were you never informed of, like, stranger danger as as a child? We are now... In the woods, at John's Hunter's funeral, uh, he's burning on a funeral pyre, and I know it's a sad scene, but it literally looks like they're cooking him. <laughs> yum yum, <laughs> yum yum. Is this legal, by the way? Like, I huh. mean, it doesn't matter in the world of supernatural, but like, in for example, I'm like, I want the Hunter's funeral to honor no. my life as a supernatural fan. <laughs> Like, would that be legal? <laughs> um, okay, I guess, what would the illegal part be? Like, the... It's the open fire? air cremation. Oh, right. Um, hmm. I don't actually know. I, I actually went on, like, uh, the internets and uh, looked up Department of Health regulations for cremation. And I learned okay. absolutely nothing on whether it's legal or not. <laughs> yes. But I did learn that cremation remains are called cremains. <laughs> no. <laughs> they literally, like in the pamphlet, they call it cremains. And I was like, this is amazing. This is worth reading through this fucking pamphlet of uh, funeral and cremation regulations. Oh, yeah, no, I'm in, in Tombstone. Dean, sadly, I scattered your cremains over that meadow. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, I'm glad whoever wrote that pamphlet had fun. Sam and Dean are cooking their father and looking on very sadly. And their expressions, I think, set up the rest of the episode where Sam's quite teary-eyed and sort of shifting back and forth. And Dean is just, like, staring, like, completely solid-faced. This is the beginning of his blue steel. Exactly, yeah. Like, Sam is giving us full-on lamentation, you know? Like, regret, uh-huh. guilt, everything. And Dean's giving us fucking blue steel. <laughs> yeah, good for Dean. And also, like, the camera spent so much longer on Dean, and, like, it, like, gives us a very, like, straight-on shot of him in the center of the frame with, yes. like, flames rising up. Like, we get it. Jackals can't act. Thanks. Uh, he also does the single man tear. This. Yes! Yes! Literally yes. started singing as soon as that started happening. Literally, a single man tear falls down his face and. He shows emotion without a trace. Exactly! <laughs> Alright, uh, so Sam asks Dean, like, before he died before that did he say anything to you about anything and dean not looking at him and also lying says no 
nothing. I, I just also want to make a comment that, like, I found it so interesting that in John's death, Sam is seen so vis- visibly emotional because mm-hmm. I know we get deaths later on where he is like almost not even allowed to react. Yeah, Mary's death. Like, it's like, Cass, no, don't bother Dean. Dean's the one who's sad. Like, who's Mary? I never knew her. So, uh, it's a week later and we're at Bobby's junkyard and Dean is working on the Impala. Looks better than last time. So Looks incredibly good, good. Yeah, uh, he is under the car on a little slidey thing. I don't know what they're called. Yeah, and he's um, showing armpit, baby. Like, not like yeah. flesh armpit, but like, you know, like armpit sweat stain. And I was like, yeah, yeah like, <laughs> there's like grease on his like gray t-shirt and i yes. was like this is fan service <laughs> this yeah. is literally fan service um d- did jensen ackles have a twitter was his previous twitter header like this scene or a different scene of dean no um the car? i think it was a scene from season 10 actually of him like standing over the impala i i know it's from a later season because he's more built like, they did twinkified mm. my boy. <laughs> uh, so, Sam comes along. He's wearing, like, this light blue polo. And I was so happy to see him. I kept cheering. I was like, he's so cute. He's such a fashion icon. Thank you for the boat shoes vibes. <laughs> he's wearing it over a gray shirt. And they're so mismatched. He's literally a fashion icon. We get to see his nipples through his shirt in the last scene, and that's <laughs> what's important. Jesus. I love that this is the commentary we're bringing the good listeners of Bad Pop. This is what Sorry, people you tune in for. So, he asks Dean about the car, and if he needs any help. Ah, uh, and Dean's like, what, you under a hood? I'll pass. And then Sam says, need anything else then? And Dean pushes himself out from under the car on his little slidey thing. And he's a little upset. And he says, stop it, Sam. Stop asking if I need anything. Stop asking if I'm okay. I'm okay. Really. I promise. And Sam says... Yeah, okay, but we've been at Bobby's for a week and you haven't brought up Dad once. And Dean says, you know what? You're right. Come here. I'm gonna lay my head gently on your shoulder. Maybe we can cry, hug, and maybe even slow dance. Okay, Dean. Um, Sam keeps pushing. Um, and he says, Dad is dead. The cult is gone, and it seems pretty damn likely that the demon is behind all of this. And I didn't know that they wouldn't know that John made a deal. Yeah. Like, they straight up think that Dean just came back to life, a purpose of nothing, and that Azazel just killed John for funsies. Yeah, that that last speech was totally not telling that John knew yeah. he was about to die at all. You know? Right. Yeah. He just told Dean, like, oh my god, I'm so proud of you, son. Also, kill Sammy for me, please. Like, just for funsies. <laughs> like, he thought after that they would just hang out. Okay, guys. Do you think that they no and are just in denial about it i'm not sure if they know the concept of a demon deal oh. right now so maybe they don't because they just uh it's just not in their consciousness the idea of making a deal with the devil but wouldn't bobby know at least bobby <laughs> my theory is that bobby does know but he's just sparing the boys the hurt so he's like oh it's not my business <laughs> Go Bobby. <laughs> Good for Bobby. Absolute king of not showing up on screen this episode. Yeah, his spirit is around. I don't know, it's it's really nice that they have a place to stay now. Do you think Sam and Dean are, like, messy in Bobby's house? 
Oh, you mean like they're like leaving their dirty dishes in the sink? Yeah, like these two have never had a permanent home. Like Dean, okay. after four years old, and Sam, like pretty much after six months of his life. So, like, how, how what are they like in Bobby's house? I want to know the dynamic. Like, I don't, I want to know the schedule that they have built in Bobby's house. Yeah, so do I. I'm assuming we don't get any like scenes of them all like sitting down to dinner or whatever right because i would have seen that in an amv i would have remembered i feel like yeah i hope that bobby makes them do the dishes sometimes sam says say something all right hell say anything aren't you angry don't you want revenge but all you do is sit out here all day long buried underneath this damn car dean goes revenge huh uh, and then he's like going on sarcastically. Sounds good. You got any leads on where the demon is? Making heads or tails of any of Dad's research? And if we finally do find it, oh wait, the cold's gone. We've got nothing. The only thing I can do is work on the car. R.I.P. R.I.P. I'm. Uh, what do you think about Sam's like feelings about revenge? Here, I think in his mind, it's less revenge for dad's death. It's more just like, let's finish the job, you know? I think when he brought up revenge, he was just trying to rile Dean up. And less like he actually believed that it's something that they should do. Yeah, agreed. Um, Especially since, you know, this whole episode is him going like, oh, I'm going to do this because that's what dad would have wanted. Yes. Like, revenge is definitely what John would have wanted. And especially since, like, their last, one of their last conversations was John going, like, if you just shot the damn demon, then we wouldn't be in this mess. Like, Sam's yeah. probably like, I'm so guilty about fighting with John right before he died, so I'm just gonna shoot the damn demon so we can be finished with this mess. Sam says that, well, we do have a clue. Uh... I, like, found one of Dad's old phones, and I got into his voicemail, and we hear a voicemail from Ellen saying Ooh. that- Woo! Hi, Ellen. I am separating the character from the actress right now. Oh, what did- what did she do? Uh, Samantha Ferris, right? I mean, yeah. she, like- Oh, I think it was just... Is, is this purely the bait during Valentine's Day? Or did she do other things? I think she's just been, like, conservative-ish on Twitter in general. Oh. I mean, like, Supernatural, the entire show is an exercise on separating the actors from the character. <laughs> Yeah, geez, the only the fuck. only time I can't do that is like fucking Lucifer. Like Mark P, get the fuck out! I fucking yeah. hate you. I hate your character. I hate everything that you contribute to the show. You know, I like when I make AMVs, for example, yes. and then there's like a Mark Pellegrino like face yeah. in the shot. Uh-huh. I strategically cut it so that he never <laughs> shows up. <laughs> Like, I just hate him so much. That's so good. That's so good. Yeah, I've also seen AMVs where people just blur his face every shot he's in. (laughs) That's so good. I should try that next time. (laughs) Yeah, um, so Ellen says over the phone, John, it's Ellen. Again, look, don't be stubborn. You know I can help you. Call me. And apparently that message is from four months ago. Uh, and Ellen is not mentioned in the journal, but apparently Sam ran a trace on her phone number and got an address. He's so smart. How do you do that? <laughs> Literally, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> yeah, that means what nothing, mean? but like, cool. Literally nothing. Yeah, well, they mentioned that they're borrowing one of Bobby's cars to go over there. Yes! And the car that they borrow is the creakiest, most rusty van possible. Sam and Dean, you know, are driving the van and they drive towards a building that says Harvell's Roadhouse up top. And when they get out, they banter a bit about Dean feeling like a soccer mom. And they start looking around. They walk into the roadhouse. It's open. 
And, and business is not going well. I don't know how they keep yes. the electricity in there. Uh, so they look around and they see a guy sleeping in the pool table. Uh, they look around some more and Sam enters a room. Dean is just walking around when we see a rifle slowly come in contact with his back. He says, oh god, please let that be a rifle. And the camera pans towards the girl behind him holding the rifle. It's Joe! Joe! Hi, Joe! She tells him not to move and then and Dean says, oh, you should know something, miss. Don't put a rifle right up someone's back because it makes it really easy to do. And then he turns and grabs the rifle, uncocks it, and says, that, you know? And Joe fucking punches him in the face, so <laughs> we're yes. cool now, Dean. Thank you, Joe. Dean calls out to Sam, and he the all the while he's whispering to himself, I can't see, I can't see. <laughs> uh, Sam gets out of the room he went in earlier with his hands behind his head, and he says, sorry, Dean. I can't right now. I'm a little tied up. And Ellen is right behind him with a gun. Hi, Ellen. Hi, Ellen. Ellen goes, Sam? Dean? Winchester? And the two go, yeah. And Joe asks if Ellen knows these guys. And she says, yeah. They're John Winchester's boys. She laughs and then puts her gun down and goes, hey, I'm Ellen. That's my daughter, Joe. And Joe says, hey, and Dean cracks a, you're not gonna hit me again, are ya? What I want to know is, do they do this with every customer who enters the (laughs) roadhouse? (laughs) Like, what if Sam and Dean were literally just some guys trying to find some shelter, like, in the middle of a hot-ass day, you know? Is there, is there, like, a secret code or certain hours during which, like, hunters are aware that the roadhouse is open? Like, I don't understand... How this business operates. Ellen is handing Dean some ice for his nose. And he asks about her voicemail. She He says, like, you could help. Help with what? And Ellen says, well, the demon, of course. I heard he was closing in on it. Dean's like, was there an article in the Demon Hunters Quarterly that I missed? Like, how do y'all know about this? And... Ellen says she just runs a saloon, but hunters pass well, through a lot. Rather poorly, I say. Yeah. Sorry, Ellen. Who am I to judge someone else's business strategy? <laughs> like, <laughs> the only business I have is a podcast. <laughs> and I'll have you know that seven whole people came to our YouTube premiere. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so she says your dad also passed through a long time ago john was like family once looks off into the distance and i know i know the context of what oh yeah i know it's because he got ellen's husband killed because he sucks yes yes but there is, like, a hint of, like, oh, is John and Alan a thing? Like, going on no. in the scene. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, there is. Yeah. What do you yeah, mean, there, there is? <laughs> there is. Sam mentions it, too. Yeah. Sam acknowledges it later. It's so selfish of John. I, I understand that he's guilty about mm-hmm. getting Joe's dad killed. Yes. But, like, why deprive Sam and Dean of this kind of company? You know, yeah. like, Ellen looks like a good adult figure, maybe for young Sam and Dean. And mm-hmm. Joe is someone who's a little bit younger than them, but is, you know, also their age. Um, yeah. Just in she's general. 21 in this episode. Yes. So I looked it up like as well. Years younger. Yeah. <laughs> she's two years younger than Sam. So, okay. you know, like, Sam could have had a friend with Joe. It's another way that John has isolated them, I feel like. Yeah. Apparently, they have this entire hunter-gathering communal area. Mm-hmm. And Sam and Dean just don't know. Like, that sucks. Yeah. And, see, I would get it if he was, like, trying to keep them from being too enmeshed in the life. But he is sending them on hunts and forcing them to hunt, so that's not it. He's just being a dick. So, 
They keep talking, and Dean asks, like, why do we need your help? And Ellen says, if you don't want my help, fine. Don't let the door smack your ass on the way out. But John wouldn't have sent you if... And then there's a long pause where everyone looks very sad and uncomfortable. And she realizes, oh, he didn't send you. He's all right, isn't he? And Sam says, no, he isn't. It was the demon, we think. It just got him before he got it, I guess. Ah, uh, and Dean says, it's okay, we're all right. And Ellen goes, really? I know how close you and your dad were. Do you think John talked about Dean a lot, like, at the bar? I mean, it's implied that, like, he yeah. mentioned his sons enough for uh, Ellen to recognize their names, so. That's true. But it seems, like, because she has that specific line, that it's, I guess I'm wondering, like, if John mentioned Dean a lot more. I've definitely, I've enjoyed the Sam fan theories that John kept Sam away from the Hunter community because he thought that eventually after Sam's powers manifested, the other hunters would try to just straight up kill baby Sam. Dean says, really, lady, I'm fine. <laughs> All Can right, give Dean. him a point? <laughs> yes. Can we give him a point? <laughs> yes, yes, I'm pulling it I out. I was like, send his ass to hell. I don't fucking care. Why is he calling this woman a lady so terribly, like, with such a terrible tone? What a man. What a man. <laughs> All right, Dean's gotten one misogyny this season so far. From John Chaban, of course. From John Chaban, of course. So Sam says, like, yeah, we do want your help. And Ellen says, well, I can't, but Ash can. And she wakes up Ash, who's passed out on, like, the pool table or yes. something. Yeah, what a king. Uh, and Joe says he's a genius. So Sam slams down a folder on the table and Dean says to Ash, well, to, like, <laughs> the world, I guess, <laughs> yeah. about Ash, he says, this guy's no genius. He's a Leonard Skinner Rody. Is that how you pronounce it? Leonard Skinner. Leonard Skinner. Yeah, Leonard Skinner. I know these guys because... <laughs> Well, uh, one, they sing Sweet Home Alabama, which, you know, is a famous song. Two, okay. they sing Simple Man, which is a song that <laughs> Jensen Ackles sings no. a lot during, like, conventions and shit. <laughs> Don't ask me how I know, but I do know. And he sings it a lot, so. Well, I mean, to clarify, Grey has never been to a convention. I think we do need to oh, clarify yeah. that. No, I'm literally in the fucking Philippines. Do you yeah. think I'll go to a fucking to the fucking US to go to a convention? Well, that's why it'd be especially embarrassing if you did. So we really need to make <laughs> like, it clear that you didn't. <laughs> yeah, like if I fly to the fucking United States of America, I am doing other things other than going to a supernatural convention. Like just to clarify, yeah. Like, we can experience homophobia at home. No need for a plane. <laughs> yeah, literally at home. Ash says to Dean, I like you. And Dean says, thanks. There's definitely Dean Ash undertones in this episode, right? Yeah, a lot of it. A lot of like, it, really. they, Like, I feel like they totally have, like, a Dean dealing with his emotions badly hookup, like, sometime. Off screen. Uh, definitely. Joe says, give him a chance. And then we linger on Ash making a face and Dean making a face. And I was like, okay, all right. <laughs> this is happening. <laughs> Dean hands over the folder and Ash starts scarring through the papers. And then he says like, this crap ain't real. Ain't nobody can track a demon like this. And Sam says, are that good? Ash relays it. These are, you know, he says things Wor that are. I don't he says think words. That it, I, I mean, I've only taken introductory data science classes, but this doesn't. I don't think that these are non-parametric statistical overviews, prospects, and correlations. 
means anything as a sentence. <laughs> but basically, what he's saying is John has a record of signs and omens. So, like, electric storms, a cattle death, just like John mentioned before. Mm-hmm. And that if you track these omens, you will be able to track the demon because they come right before the demon comes. Sam asks if Ash can do it, i.e. like track the demon. And Ash says, with this, yeah, I think so. Give me 51 hours. And then he starts to walk away. And Dean calls out to him and says, hey, I dig the haircut. And Ash, Ash has a mullet. So for the uninformed, yes. Ash is a mulleted man. Not the K-pop mullet that is very famous right now. Like, it's a mullet mullet. Mm. And uh, Ash says his iconic line of, Business up front, party in the back. Go, Ash. Why did Dean say that? Like, was he just making fun of him? Uh, I think, like, it's supposed to make fun of Ash. Yeah, but it's... uh, I think so, too, but, like... It's such a good mullet. And also, like, yeah. Dean totally wants into his pants, so I'm just not reading it <laughs> like that. Yeah. Ugh. Society of Dean got a mullet. I'm sure there's fine art of that. Now, Sam is talking to Alan, and he sees a folder that says, like, murder on it. It literally says murder on it. <laughs> yeah. Like, no wonder no one comes to your bar, Alan. Also, it just... The outside of it, it looks a lot smaller on the outside, right? Oh, I just feel like all the outside shots of the roadhouse, it looks like a very small building. It looks way bigger on the inside. It's the TARDIS. Uh, so she shows him a bunch of newspaper clippings about the murder that we sort of saw in the beginning. Uh, and apparently... The couple was murdered and the child was left behind in Medford, Wisconsin. Meanwhile, we get Dean and Joe, and we find out that Ellen got into this stuff from Joe's dad, who was a hunter. Dean tells Joe that he's sorry about her dad's death, and she says, It was a long time ago. I was just a kid. Sorry to hear about your dad. And then Dean... Bro, like, bro... (laughs) Bro, just from a logical, from a logical standpoint, like, you don't want to get kicked out of the bar for fucking the owner's daughter when you're relying on Ash to get the demon stuff. Like, just putting aside anything else, like, just from a strategic standpoint, this is a bad call. He says, so, I guess I've got 51 hours to waste. Maybe tonight we should, uh... Bro, Dean. He's this man such has, a loser. He's such a fucking loser. Jesus Christ. And he looks at Joe and he goes, you know what? Never mind. <laughs> Same fucking energy as Sam telling Lori, sorry, I can't kiss you. I'm too sad about my girlfriend's death. <laughs> Dean's like, if my dad hadn't just died, I would be all over that baby, but... Unfortunately, he is dead. Joe says, what? And Dean says, nothing. Just, uh, wrong place, wrong time. And Joe says, you know, I thought you were gonna toss me some cheap pickup line. And he was, Joe. He totally was. (laughs) I don't know why you think that he's better than that. He's not. I think, I, I actually read this as, like, Joe was being sarcastic, like, Oh, I thought you were gonna toss me a pickup line. Some guys come in here, like, with a oh, six-pack and yeah, okay. side two of Led Zeppelin, but not you. And, like, okay. it was supposed to be, like, a dig at him actually yeah. about to have done that. Right. Because, like, Dean's face was like, he looks like he got caught. Right. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I guess it's just because she seems, like, because she's, like receptive to his like advances later so like i was like i don't like really know what's going on in her brain i mean i get that joe is like into dean like dean is a handsome person so oh my god (laughs) (laughs) 
It's like from from a logical standpoint. I don't know if this is logical. It's not logical, but like from like a standpoint of like a a, a good looking guy enters your roadhouse, like you're like, and he like propositions you, and then he's like, no, but I'm too sad. <laughs> I'm too sad to fuck right now. Like oh, you'll, yeah, you'll be I like, can see how you could pour little meow meowify that situation. Joe wants to, like, put Dean in a nightlight and shake him around like a can of Pringles. Yeah, she says, Most hunters come through that door think they can get in my pants with some pizza, a six-pack, and side one of Zeppelin four. Um, and Dean goes, Well, what a bunch of scumbags. <laughs> and Joe goes, But not you. And Dean says, I guess not. Um... So, Sam calls Dean over to check out the case. Sam tells Dean that there have been a few murders near here, and there might be a hunt, so let's go check it out. So, Sam and Dean are back in the van, and they're driving towards Wisconsin. Sam relays what we learned earlier, which is that, you know, a clown went inside the house. And what happened afterwards was that the clown killed both the parents... But left the daughter unharmed. Uh, the way he killed the parents was that he ripped them to pieces. So I was thinking about what you said about what, like, if the case had anything to do with grief, and you know how they could have made the case good yes, by having exactly. them interview the kids and have Sam connect with this child who feels guilty for her parents' deaths. But I feel like that would be too in your face. But it would be better than this. <laughs> Also, like, season one was full of in-your-face mirrors. Like, I think we can carry that energy through a little more. Uh, Dean asks how they know this isn't, this isn't just a guy in a clown suit. And Sam says that all the clowns in the carnival earlier that day have alibis. And the girl actually said she saw the clown vanish into thin air. And Dean, like, teases Sam. And this is when we know that... Sam is afraid of clowns. Sam says, well, at least I'm not afraid of flying. And Dean says, well, planes crash. And Sam replies, and apparently clowns kill. (laughs) Sam proceeds on saying that in 1981, there was a similar case with another circus. Uh, The circus is called the Bunker Brothers. Brothers. (laughs) (laughs) Sam and Dean are literally the Bunker Brothers. That back when that carnival was going around, uh, the same kind of murder happened three times in three different locales. Dean says, like, the different locales thing is weird because usually ghosts stay put and they think it's maybe a curse object. Dean comments on the fact that Sam jumped on this case real quickly. And Sam says, well, it's what Dad would have wanted. He would have wanted us to get back in the job. And Dean says, wow, like, what dad would want us to do? And Sam says, yeah, so? And Dean says nothing. I'm not really sure what Dean is thinking. Like, I know what Sam's thinking. He's guilty and he's just, you know, following John's wishes. I don't know what Dean's thinking. Yeah, Dean is probably thinking that Sam either is guilty or that Sam wanted him to go out of Bobby's house. Sam is, like, trying to drag him around. Uh, But either way, like, he thinks there's a hidden agenda happening. So that's why he's side-eyeing Sam. Uh, so we're back at the carnival. We're at the fun house. And there's some kid and his dad. He's not paying attention because he's just, like, playing a video game. So true, me too. (laughs) Um, and the dad's trying to get him excited about the situation, but he's not. Uh, but then the boy looks up and sees in the reflection of the glass the creepy clown waving at him, and he turns around and the clown's gone. Evan's, like, scared, but his dad says, Don't be afraid of clowns. They're nice. They're your friends, okay? This man's gonna regret those words so hard. Uh, so... It's at night, and it's Evan's parents' bedroom. They're asleep, and Evan wakes his dad up, and he says, You were right. He is my friend. 
And the camera pans over to see the clown's hand holding Evans, and it smiles at his parents, and the dad screams. I, I think that was a good reveal, the, the pan yes. over and the, the, the head. You're right, he yeah. is my friend. I actually yeah. was, like, creeped out. Like, yeah, oh my god, should... that's kind of creepy. Yeah, it was, it was a good, it was, the pacing was done quite well. But I also think yeah. it's so funny that since the clown was in no way able to influence these kids at all, like, Evan wouldn't even have let this guy in. He would have just been scared of him unless his dad had said one s- sentence. Okay, we get to the... <laughs> the <laughs> okay, so... Uh, Sam and Dean drive to the carnival, and in the corner they see, like, a couple of cops talking to some people. So Dean checks it out, and Sam is waiting, like, standing by a ride. And... Supernatural does this thing where Sam, where a little person comes across the screen and, like, Sam is looking at her, right? Mm -hmm. And he's really looking at her. Like, he's fucking staring. And we zoom in on Sam's face and then we zoom in on her face and it's a whole thing. Yeah. (laughs) And I was like... Supernatural! Like, have you never seen a little person before? Sam Winchester, have you never seen a little person before? It's just... It's... I don't know. Was 2006... And 2006 was a different time. But, like, little person, like, exists in the world. They they don't just exist in media. You see them around. I... Yeah, I... I guess... Like, the charitable reading would be that since she's in a clown outfit, he was trying to figure out if she was involved in the case and also he was scared of her because she was in a clown outfit but like i oh, think supernatural is yeah. just being fucking weird i i think that is the charitable reading like right because like f- at first that's what i thought was happening because i was like i don't understand what's happening oh it must be because she's in a clown outfit and then i was like oh wait supernatural sucks never mind <laughs> <laughs> uh anyway dean comes in and asks sam like oh did you get her number and then Sam, like, I don't Should know, makes I make face, an I ableism tab on my spreadsheet? Are are we? Like, I don't know. The people. Yeah, probably not. Is this also misogyny, though? I, don't I feel know. like it's, the the it's source ableism, of the I'd say yeah yeah. Okay. So like, uh, Babpod listeners, we're we're not gonna make a tally, but know that we see it and we do not enjoy it. Yeah, <laughs> it, like we will acknowledge it when it happens. So, mm-hmm. but I I just don't think we're the people specifically to be making this kind yeah. of uh call. I guess. Yeah. Okay, so Sam ignores that and asks about the murders, and Dean relays that there are new ones last night, uh, the one we just saw. Mm. Dean says that they had a little boy with them, and Sam says, "Who fingered the clown?" <laughs> And then <laughs> Dean takes a pause so we can laugh, I guess. But yeah. it's just, it's not a funny show. <laughs> like, I'm laughing right now because you're laughing. But, like, it's when it happened, so I was, I actually had to replay it because, like, I didn't get it. Like, I didn't get what was happening. Yeah. So I had to replay it. And it's like, oh, okay. I don't... Do you think this is funny, John Chavan? <laughs> I, 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 okay, doesn't fingered also mean, like, something else? Pointed like, at. Okay. It means pointed at. Like, that's what he means. Yeah, okay, okay, right. So, yeah, okay, so John Chavan just thought it would be funny to have the, yeah, okay. I didn't laugh when it happened, I was but confused. when you read the line, I, like, was like, <laughs> it was just a funny sentence on its own, you know? Dean confirms that, you know, there was a clown, and Sam starts talking about how cursed objects are like finding a needle in a needle stack, which I thought was a good metaphor for the situation. And Dean says, well, we just have to check everything for EMF. And Sam scoffs, but Dean says, well, we'll blend in. And they zoom in on a sign saying, Help Wanted, Inquire with Jay Cooper. Thank you take this part, Crystal. <laughs> so, this is, this 
sure th there's a scene that is about to happen. Yes. Okay. So we go into a tent and there's a man wearing sunglasses throwing knives at a target. And they all land pretty close. And Dean says, excuse me, we're looking for a Mr. Cooper. Have you seen him around? And the guy turns around and says, what is that? Some kind of joke? And he takes off his sunglasses and his eyes are cloudy. And Dean says, oh God, I'm sorry. And then the man continues saying, like, you think I wouldn't give my eye teeth to see Mr. Cooper or a sunset or anything at all? Sam is amused by the situation. And then another little person, not the one from before, comes in and says, is there a problem? And the blind man, because he doesn't get a name in this episode, and so I guess that's just what we're calling him, says that this guy hates blind people, and the little person says, what's your problem? And Dean says, nothing. It's just a little misunderstanding. And the little person says, little, you son of a bitch. And then Dean is just like, sorry, sorry, just please tell me where Mr. Cooper is, please. So that's the scene. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> I've mentioned it before in the podcast, but uh, not in detail. But I'm also not going to mention it in detail here, mm. just because I don't want to air out my health uh, conditions. But yeah. I have a pretty visible uh, health condition right mm -hmm. and people like to make jokes about it you know mm. and then when you like get defensive they do the whole like why are you defensive bit or something mm -hmm. and like i i've experienced it both in real life and also like i have watched like like i'll be innocent like watching a tv show and the tv show like makes a joke at like people like my people's expense and okay. it's like oh well that sucks and it's incredibly humiliating mm -hmm. so like i can, and even then like even with that background like i can't imagine like the kind of humiliation that like for example if you're a little person and like seeing this scene i just did not find it funny i yeah especially the camera work i guess like there yeah. the, the 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 part where like they hear a voice, so they turn around, and the camera pans to Sam and Dean's height, and then it pans down just to show you that, oh, the, they're talking to a person who is short. And it's like, a part of me, like, when I was watching, I, I was, like, questioning, like, am I overreacting, right? No, like, you're not. A part of me was, like, I've had experiences of, like, feeling humiliated by a uh, medical condition because like because of that is that the reason why i'm like projecting onto this but like i i don't think so i get that like people are allowed to joke about everything you know <laughs> like i don't want to be the person who's like people are not allowed to joke about this 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 and this but because like we just see little people in this episode twice and yeah. both times they like highlight the that fact you yeah. know about and them make a joke at their expense yeah Ugh. it it really frustrates me it really frustrated me and i act i physically had to stop watching because like mm. i was like so upset and like i had to drink water to calm down the okay the scene is also incredibly tonally jarring yes like it does not fit the rest of the episode at all and it does pretty much nothing from the plot besides, I guess, introduce us to the blind man as a character, which could have been done in literally any other way. And, but also, like, the whole thing just played out like a comedy sketch on, like, a right-wing TV channel about how the liberal snowflakes get offended by everything. A part of me was like, did they ADR in Sam laughing? Because they realize that the scene is not that funny. So, like, we have to have someone laughing in the background 
to convey to the audience as that like no you're supposed to be laughing here like this is supposed to be a funny scene <sighs> it's just it's not a good scene well that was it's there <laughs> that sure happened on supernatural okay so they go into mr cooper's office and he tells them to take a seat there are two chairs available and one has like a giant clown on it so dean grabs the (laughs) non-clown chair uh and sam like takes a second before he sits down in the clown chair because it scares him and i wish that this was a cursed object episode both because it means that we wouldn't have cultural appropriation later and also because I really wanted the cursed object to be the clown chair. <laughs> so, Mr. Cooper tells them that there's been some local trouble because a couple of folks got themselves murdered. <laughs> Dean Core, you always have a choice. You can either lay down and die or you can keep fighting. So, he asks about their work experience. And they're like, oh yeah, we've totally done the circus. We did all of the jobs, all the circus jobs, yeah. Dean says, we really need the work. And Sam here's got a thing for the bearded lady. Yay, we love... How many things is this misogyny, transphobia, and intersexism, and probably also homophobia? (laughs) I'm fucking have no idea. <laughs> Can we so, put it in the count, though? Yeah, I think I'll just put it in the misogyny count because that's the one that we have a count for. Oh, uh, like for it's like oh, it's so funny that anyone would ever have a thing for an intersex person. It's so funny that anyone would have a thing for like a quote unquote ugly or gender non-conforming woman. It's gay that someone would have a thing for an intersex person. There's, like, so many things that Dean is saying. And then Mr. Cooper, out of fucking nowhere, goes into this spiel where he's like, my dad was in the business, um, and apparently his dad looks just like him. That's, like, sort of plot relevant. He says, he ran a freak show till they outlawed them most places. Apparently, displaying the deformed isn't dignified, so most of the performers went from honest work to rotting in hospitals and asylums. That's progress, I guess. And this whole scene, you see Sam and Dean frowning and shaking their heads to show that they disagree with disability rights? (laughs) I don't know. Like, it's just confusing to me because I like I know that this person is wrong but Supernatural really is trying to convince yeah. you that no this person is right like these right. people were doing honest work and then they, the work was taken away and like I'm sure that there are um, experiences where that is true you know yeah like not all not all experiences are the same but I think you should take this one because you're the one who yeah, I mean, I just read a few PDFs. So, yeah, I am not an expert on the subject, and I am also able-bodied. But, like, from, like, the bits of reading that I did yesterday... Okay, so, like, the truth in Mr. Cooper's statement is that, like, there was a time when, like, this was basically the only work that a lot of disabled people could get. And it is true that some of them actually did become quite rich off of this work. So, like, there are, like, cases where, like, in some ways this was good for individuals. But also, like, the idea of being able to consent to this kind of work means that, like, meaningful consent requires you to have, like, options, you know? So, if there's not an option, then that's not really it. And also, like, because this was the only work, um... Oftentimes, even if they were paid decently, there was, like, a lot of exploitative working hours. Also, like, a lot of them weren't paid, like, pr- they weren't paid decently. Um, and also, like, the c- whole concept of the freak show is that you are weird, that is sensationalized and marketed, 
Yeah, and then people go around and gawk at you in a dehumanizing way, often, like, in a physically violating way, too, like, like, poking at you, all of that. So it's just really not a good thing in general. Also, like, freak shows uh, had a big impact on the ways that people viewed disabled people in Western society because, like, basically the only times that you would see a lot of disabled people in public. Yeah, so, like, it's just a situation where the only time that you're encountering disabled people outside of, like, hospitals and stuff is, like, through these shows where there are people, like, hawking their disabilities as, like, something, like, to look at. Um, also, these shows were, like, sometimes encouraged, like, you were encouraged to go to them by, like, the clergy because they thought it would be, like, a good moral experience for you to, like, feel pity for these poor souls and also feel good that, like, you're not one of them. It's just so... It's just such a fucking... It's just such a fucking thing. Also, a lot of them were recruited as children. It's just, yeah, a really bad thing. And I guess I should also mention that, um, in addition to, like, disabled people, a lot of people of color were also part of freak yes. shows. So, like... There were, like, mm -hmm. there were instances of, like, Filipino children, mostly, like, being taken to the United States or, like, you know, other quote-unquote western countries and being displayed as like look at the filipino child like th yeah. these are things that happened in history yeah both said it gray here uh i was mistaken i said filipino children i actually was supposed to say filipino tribes it, i mean which does involve children but specifically it was the filipino indigenous people who were taken for uh, World Fair purposes and human zoo exhibitions. Yep. Yeah. And I know, like, I think there's, like, a specific case of a South African woman named Sarah Bartman who had a steatopegia, which is, I think, a pretty common genetic trait among the Sand Tribe. But, yeah, she was, like taken around like for display a lot um because she just had like large buttocks and like her image really helped canonize the image of black women as hypersexual and foreign otherwise dehumanized in the western world and after she died they like like france like kept her remains and they like specifically kept her genitals for like display in like museums and for like scientific like stuff and like they didn't give up her remains back to her home country until 200 years like afterwards so like yeah just the entire practice was extremely dehumanizing and even if there were some individuals uh who were disabled who benefited financially from this situation like overall like the effect on society was absolutely horrendous. The sentiments behind it were absolutely horrendous. And I guess the laws around them, around banning them, like, were, I think, like, the negative effects came because there weren't, like, additional laws to, like, create employment opportunities and social safety nets for disabled people that came along with those laws. But the laws themselves, like, were a good thing. <laughs> yeah, okay, so, yeah, anyway, so I guess... Mr. Cooper continues talking and says that this place is a refuge for outcasts, for folks that don't fit in anywhere else. Sure, bro. I guess they're trying to do, like, Sam and Dean are also outcasts who yeah. don't fit in anywhere else. Ugh. <sighs> You know in Glee where it's like, you're all minorities, you're in the Glee club, you're all outcasts, you're hunters. <laughs> and if they were actually outcasts, then maybe you would show them being regular about everyone in the carnival. He tells them that they should go to school 
find a couple of girls, like multiple each, I guess, <laughs> and then have 2.5 kids live regular. And Sam, like, leans forward all intensely and goes, Sir, we don't want to go to school, and we don't want regular. We want this. Okay. <laughs> cool. So, Sam and Dean get out of the office and are now walking around. Dean asks Sam about the don't want to go back to school remark. And he asks if Sam is just saying that or actually saying it. And Sam says he doesn't know, but he's having second thoughts because dad would have wanted him to stick around with the job. Dean says, since when did you give a damn about what dad wants? You've always wanted to do the opposite of what he wants. And Sam says, since he died, okay? Sam asks, you got a problem with that? Dean says, no, no problem at all. Uh, we then go to Sam working the job, picking up trash. And he he has like a little earphone. Cute. His, he's not listening to MCR. He's listening to the EMF. So that's unfortunate. He enters the mirror funhouse and starts EMFing the place. At first to no avail, but then a skeleton falls in front of him and freaks him out a bit. So he calls Dean, who is working the job as well, picking up trash, throwing it away. Uh, Sam sounded like a bit off. Dean cracks a, you sound like you just saw a clown joke. And D- Sam says like, shut up. And it was a skeleton actually. In the fun house, and Dean asks if it's a real human skeleton. And Sam says, like, what is th- the spirit is not attached to a curse object, it's attached to the remains. I don't know. Have you seen an actual skeleton? Um, I don't know. Probably not. I have because, uh, like, I have siblings who work in the medical field, mm-hmm. and like, when they have classes, they like take home, like, yeah. a box of skeletons pretty cool nice i just yeah. wanted to mention that i have no commentary whatsoever <laughs> i just thought it was cool it is pretty cool i was literally like i would be like 10 years old or like you know like yeah. i don't fucking know 12 maybe and i'm just sitting in the garage like holding up the rib bones or whatever it's pretty cool that does sound cool <laughs> my comment on these scenes is that Mr. Cooper was like, this place is only for creeps and weirdos, and then their job is picking up trash at an amusement park. (laughs) (laughs) Dean heads to Sam, but before he can go, he gets stopped by the blind man from earlier, who asks Dean what he's doing. Dean says, like, I'm sweeping, and the man calls bullshit. He overheard the EMF and skeleton talk, and Dean says, Dude, your blind man hearing is out of control. <laughs> Literally, why couldn't you just say hearing? I don't understand. <laughs> the man says that he doesn't like outsiders and they, as in like the collective group, don't like outsiders and they deal with their problems by themselves. Dean asks, like out of fucking nowhere? <laughs> I don't know why the conversation went to this. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't understand. But he asks, like, do you believe in ghosts? And says that him and Sam are writing a book about it. When Sam and Dean reunite, they see a girl uh, in the crowd tell her mom that she's seeing a clown. But they go to look and there's no clown there. So they follow this family <laughs> <laughs> to their home. <laughs> In their squeaky ass <laughs> minivan. Sam tells Dean, like, I can't believe you told Papazian about the homicidal phantom clown. Uh, Is that a name or a reference? Yeah, see, that's what I'm not sure about. Because, like, if it's, like, a reference to, like, a blind, like, TV character, I don't want to be using that as his name. Okay, yeah, yeah, no. The Supernatural Wiki calls him Barry Papazian. So, mm. Yeah. Okay, so he has a name, but the transcript just didn't give it to us. Like, as <laughs> yeah. his dialogue tag. Okay. Okay, so yeah. His name's Barry Papazian. I guess I'll just call him Barry. Okay, so 
Yeah, Sam tells Dean that he can't believe that he told Barry about the phantom clown. Um, but Dean says that, oh, I just told him it was an urban legend. It's cool. And he starts pulling out a gun and pointing it at this poor family's house. And Sam's like, keep that down. And then Dean says that apparently uh, Mr. Cooper worked for the Bunker Brothers Circus before he owned Cooper Carnival. So it's likely that whatever the spirit's attached to, Cooper just brought it with him. Uh, Dean has fallen asleep later on, but then the light goes on in the house, and this little girl also just lets a fucking clown into her house, asking him, wanna come in and play? <laughs> At what, like at midnight? How is she still awake? <laughs> Don't you have school tomorrow, little girl? <laughs> um, so she leads the clown in, and we pan over and see that Sam and Dean have snuck into the house and are waiting behind a corner with their weapons ready. Uh, the little girl is leading the clown to her parents' bedroom, and then Sam jumps out and grabs the girl to get her out of the way as Dean keeps shooting the clown in the chest with rock salt. Um, it falls down but keeps going and then jumps out of the window and turns invisible. The parents run out and they're like, what the fuck are you doing? Get, get away from my daughter. Um, the dad's wearing like this like white like tank top that like shows off his arms pretty well. And you have <laughs> created the sentence, is this fan service in my mind every time something like this no. happens. But I don't think it is because it's like a very quick shot. Um, so, so Dan leave the girl behind and run away really fast. And she says, mommy, daddy, they shot my clown. So... Uh, we we go to Sam and Dean in the middle of the road. Well, not in the middle, in the side of the road. And they are taking the plates off of the van and taking their stuff and leaving the van behind. Uh, okay, they start walking away. And they talk about the case. The rock salt hit the clown pretty hard. So that was something solid. It's not a spirit. Sam thinks it may be a person or a creature that can induce invisibility. And Sam, like, gets out his phone to call Ellen or Ash. And and asks Dean the thing that we mentioned earlier, which is, like, the hints of John Ellen shenanigans. <laughs> Dean, Dean says, like, no way, no way that they were a thing. And Sam asks, then why did he not tell us about her? Dean's like, I don't know, maybe a falling out. And Sam says, do you ever notice that dad has a falling out with just about everybody? And Dean goes silent. Sam tells Dean, don't go all maudlin on me. And I thought maudlin was a name. So I looked it up and apparently it's an actual word. Yeah. And it's a pretty cool word. Maudlin. Yeah. Good yeah. word. This strong silent thing of yours is crap. I'm over it, Sam says. Dean says, like, oh, God, you know, his usual Dean, oh, God. Mm -hmm. And Sam continues on saying that this is dad. I know how you felt about the man. Dean says, shut up, just because I'm not caring and sharing like you want me to. And Sam says, I don't care how you deal with it. I just want you to deal with it. I'm your brother, and I just want to make sure you're okay. Dean starts shouting. He says... I'm okay. The next person who asks me if I'm okay, I'm gonna start throwing punches. Words from an okay person. And Dean says, like, these are your issues, man. Quit dumping that on me. And Sam asks, like, what does that mean? What do you mean? And Dean continues, he says that jo that Sam fought John all his life. And even in John's last moments, they were fighting. And only now... This, did he start thinking about what John would want? He says, now that he's dead, now you want to make it right? 
Well, I'm sorry, but you can't. It's too little too late. Mm. Sam asks quietly, Why are you saying this to me? And Dean says, Because I want you to be honest with yourself, man. I'm dealing with dad's death. Are you? They stare at each other furiously. And then Sam says, I'm gonna call Alan. I can't believe Dean's saying Sam's the one in the wrong here. And he has to make it right with John. But I understand where he's coming from. He's mourning. I don't think, like, he's saying that, like, Sam is wrong. Uh, I think he's just saying that, like, this is what you think is happening. Mm. Which is that you were in the wrong. Like, you know. Like, he's not siding with someone right now. He's just verbalizing what Sam is thinking. Okay. Okay, I feel like earlier when Dean was talking to Sam and being like, oh, did you really mean it that you, like, don't want to go back to school? I think my reading of that part, or my charitable reading of that part, was that Dean desperately wants Sam to get out of the life now that John is dead because it means he's less likely to go dark side, which means it's less likely that Dean's gonna have to kill him. But I don't, I don't know if that's in here at all. I, I actually thought about that as well, okay. but... Uh, I def- I like retracted it from my notes because I think like just Dean doesn't really know what the fuck John was saying still yeah. at this point. Yeah. So like it's not consciously in his mind that like Sam is gonna go dark side. Right. Like he's just thinking, what a weird thing that told me, <laughs> you know. Right before Azazel mysteriously murdered him and Dad had no idea it was gonna happen. Sam has finished talking to Ellen and says that Ellen thinks that the creature is a Rakshasa. He says, it's a race of ancient Hindu creatures. Okay, go supernatural again. I didn't do that much background research on the creature, but I know that they're found in multiple religions besides just Hinduism, and that um, I think they're like a bit more complex than Supernatural makes them out to be. Like sometimes they are like heroes and strong warriors, Uh, sometimes they're evil. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot going on, but overall I just think it's kind of shitty. I don't think it's the worst thing Supernatural's ever done, but like, ugh. I think, you know, like, it's fine for a horror show to take elements from other cultures other than the ones present, yeah. you know, predominantly in where mm-hmm. they are located. I think that's all right. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think every single uh, creature that Supernatural takes from is, like, a sin that they're taking from the right. culture. But, you know, this, this creature literally could have been anything because uh-huh. it literally did not matter what it yeah. was. Like, that's not the point of the episode. So, a a part of me is, like, when when you're taking from something, you know, like, Mm -hmm. put some effort in, you know? Like, (laughs) just throw, like, plus two effort in this (laughs) scenario. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's more my complaint than the fact that they're taking from a culture. Like, if you are gonna take from some lore try to make it matter more i guess Mm -hmm. i think maybe i was more sensitive because it's like when i googled the creature to like learn more about them like the first two like results were like a DD wiki page and like a forgotten realms wiki page so it's like this is a creature that like a lot of different media properties have taken in for their own and, like, it's just kind of, I don't know, it makes me sad that, like, it, like, it's been so divorced from the original cultural context that, like, the first result is the D&D page for them, you know? So, he explains that they're in human form, they eat humans, they can make themselves invisible, and they can't enter a home without first being invited. Isn't this, like, the lore of- That's basically vampires, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I guess they were like, we are making our vampires special, so we have to 
make up new things that are also vampires, but not vampires. I think, I think a vampire, oh my god, wait, sorry, I was about to say I think a vampire dressing up as a clown would be cool, but then I remembered the supernatural finale. <laughs> no! No. No. Yeah, no, but I think, like, vampires dressing up as clowns to become invited into Holmes is, like, a fun idea. If, like, the vampires are, like, actually dressed up as actual clowns yeah. and not just wearing a clown face. Yes. It's like, like, if you're gonna become a clown, commit to the bit, you know? <laughs> put on the clown makeup. Don't put on a mask. Me recording this podcast. <laughs> Literally <laughs> us recording this podcast. Committing to the bit. Need ask why they don't just eat the kids and sounds like, I don't know, not enough meat on the bones, maybe? And, like, they don't try to explain this more at all later. It's just, like, we know that Supernatural didn't want to show child murder. <laughs> Apparently, also, they sleep on a bed of dead insects, and they have to yeah. feed a few times every 20 or 30 years. Uh, so they think that it's probably Cooper, because he was working both shows, and that picture of that father that looks just like him, maybe that just straight up was him. And apparently you kill these creatures with a dagger made of pure brass. Um, and Sam says, before we start stabbing things into him, we should make sure it's him. And Dean jokingly goes, oh, you're such a stickler for details, Sammy. And they sort of smile at each other, so you get the sense that, like, despite their big fight, they're still okay, in a way. So they head to the carnival. Also, like, I wanna, I just wanna say, like, for the Dean girls, like, I did notice the nail biting, you know. The what? This scene has it. Like, there's a scene where, like, Dean, like, bites his nails. Oh. Why does that matter? <laughs> you literally do not care. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's just, it's like, it shows nervousness, you know, oh, it right. shows agitation. Yes. Dean has feelings, it's like, correct. Yeah, it's it's gift a lot, you know, like oh. that scene. And also oh. just this scene, this scene in general, like the scene of them walking down the road is in a lot of like season two mood board type of mm. scenarios. Yeah, that makes so, sense. I, so this is like a scene that like people know. Okay, yeah. Well, congratulations, Dean girls. Congratulations to RL Fixation, Dean Winchester Truther. <laughs> Literally, uh, Sigmund <laughs> Freud would be so proud. Inside the carnival, Sam's going into Cooper's trailer to check on his bed. Meanwhile, Dean is going with Barry to the tent because Dean's asking him if he has a pure brass knife. Sam slices open... The mattress uh, doesn't look very bug-filled, and also Cooper is there pointing a gun at him, going, what do you think you're doing? Meanwhile, Barry tells Dean to go in and check the trunk. He opens it, and there's a red clown wig. He turns around, and he goes, you? And Barry drops his cane, pulls off his sunglasses, and then his eyes, like, uncloud, or no, his eyes are, like, uncloudy, and he says, me, and then he, like, becomes invisible, and his eyes are glowing in, like, the air. Uh, okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> cool anyway uh dean starts banging on the door and he's trying to get out but can't he gets tossed around a bit when he eventually gets out he comes across and i wrote i write in my notes quote sam because i yeah. thought this was like Barry, gonna be like yeah. a double bluff yeah but it's not it's literally just like they don't even do a whole he changes shape like they literally don't mm. So does that mean that Barry, like, every single night puts on literal clown makeup yes. and clown wig? Yes. Because, Jesus Christ. That's dedication. for it. Literally the, the fucking dedication. 
Dean relates that it's, you know, uh, Barry who's the Rakshasa and that he didn't get the brass blades. So Sam says he's got an idea and he enters the fun house. They both do. And as they are walking and, well, running, I guess, inside, they get separated by a wall. And Sam tells him, go find the maze. What? Like, this entire scene, I was like, yeah. What is happening? I know, yeah. like, I know it's not the point of the episode, so that's why they don't like to linger on the case that much mm-hmm. and don't like flesh it out properly. Mm-hmm. But you cannot flesh out a case and it still be interesting, you know. So the fact that this one is so subpar is just really disappointing. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, what do you mean, go find the maze? Like, yeah. go find me in the maze? Is that what he's trying to say? And, like, how does he know that there's brass? Yeah. There's, like, a brass instrument inside. It's just an organ. How do you tell what the metal in it is? Anyway, they both walk around, and Sam finds the, like, organ. Mm-hmm. And it has steam coming out of it. And he tries to pry apart a piece of it to stab uh, the Rakshasa with. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dean finds him eventually, and I was like, in my notes, quote, Dean, because I thought it was going to be a bluff. <laughs> oh, but I was literally not a bluff. I had two thoughts on Sam grabbing the steam pipes. One was, you remember that later season's, like, scene that gets screenshotted of Sam taking, like, a tray out of the oven with his bare hands? <laughs> literally. <laughs> I think it was a pot of pasta. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like taking it out of the stove top. Yeah. And it's like Sam. Sam. Literally barehanded. Yeah. And like, do you know the context of that episode? No. Like, the what context is it? was that Chuck took away their main character powers. So they're oh. just normal people now. So, like, you're supposed to think that all this time, Sam literally would just grab hot <laughs> objects and be like, it's fine. It's it's a hot object, but it's not that bad. And, like, now that Chuck took away their powers, he's like, ouch, youch. Like, That's so all right, funny. Sure. <sighs> yeah, and my second thought was Jimmy Novak Core. <laughs> literally, Jimmy Novak Core. Dean finds him eventually, right? And mm-hmm. Dean says that, uh, sh- shouldn't the guy, like, the guy's clothes float around? And then, uh, as, you know, Sam is taking out the brass object, Dean gets pinned to the wall by an- a couple of knives. Mm-hmm. And so the Rakshasa is around. And, and completely nude. <laughs> complete no i know Wait, uh, we'll get into it later but <laughs> uh, sam eventually gets a piece of brass and then he asks dino where where is the man where's the man and then dean reaches out for a switch which i thought was gonna make it rain mm. i mean like you know like sprinkle water around yeah but it doesn't it makes the steam from the brass organ Go Bo- boom. I have no idea what's <laughs> happening in this. Scene. There's just a lot of steam now. There's more of it than before. Yeah. There's there's a lot of steam now. That's what's important. And uh the steam causes them to be able to see the figure and the silhouette of the Rakshasa. Sam stabs him and then he dies. And then Sam and Dean stand over the body and they see that it has disappeared and clothes are left behind mm. right yeah am i did no i, I know he's right? clothed but i feel like the implication of dean going like shouldn't we see his clothes around and then you see a knife being thrown i feel like the viewer's supposed to think for a second is he naked no <laughs> But anyway, like, this entire scene was so anticlimactic. Yeah, it was not good. It's like, okay. Like, sure. Wow, it just happened to be a brass pipe and you stabbed him. Yay. Yeah. Uh, so now we're back at the roadhouse. And Ellen's congratulating them. So, Joe sits down at the bar. And then she, like, looks at Sam and smiles at him a lot. 
And apparently that was supposed to be a signal for him to go away, but it kind of just looked like she was flirting with Sam, right? I literally was like, oh, she's flirting Sam up. And I know that Dean Joe is more the thing. But like in this moment, I was like, wait, Sam and Joe? <laughs> yeah. Is, what? But apparently not. She's just asking him to go away. Which yeah. Is like, okay, I, sure. Yeah, I could not tell that that was the social signals being put I out. I literally could not tell. I literally could not tell. Yeah. I uh, would, like, if I was Sam in that moment, I'd be like, Joe is into me. <laughs> literally. Yeah. I'd be, like, giggling and twirling my hair, like, oh my god, me, Joe, yeah, here's my number. Right, so Sam goes, oh yeah, I I have to go over there right now. And because I still thought that this was Joe flirting with Sam, I was like, Sam gay arrow moments again. But no. <laughs> Sam so, good brother moments. Yeah. So, Joe says to Dean, so, am I gonna see you again? And Dean says, do you want to? And Joe says, I wouldn't hate it. I don't get it. Whatever. You said Dean's a handsome man, and apparently many people think that, so I guess that's all I have to understand. So, Dean says... Can I be honest with you? See, normally I'd be hitting on you so fast it would make your head spin. What a weird thing to what say. What a weird thing to say, Dean. I would be hitting on you so hard right now. Like, your head will be spinning. You will be what? decapitated Why? because of how staunch my sexual advances on you would be. <laughs> Um, yeah, and he says, these days, I don't know. And she says, wrong place, wrong time? He says, yeah. She says, okay, I get it. And Ash comes in with the folder and a chunky-ass laptop. And he says, oh, also, he's, like, wearing a vest over, like, no shirt yeah, or anything. and his nipples are out. <laughs> good for him. Yeah, good for him. What a lad. Uh, and he says that he's been waiting for them, uh, cause he has figured out John's whole thing. He shows them that his code says that the demon's nowhere around, but as soon as he does show up, He'll know. He says, I'm on it like divine on dog dookie. Did you understand what that was supposed to mean? I have no fucking idea. Let's look Let's it up. Let's look at the wiki. Yeah. It's from a thing called Pink Flamingos. A postmodern exploitation comedy. Or strictly speaking, camp film. Wow. <laughs> wow. Divine is like a criminal and then like... Picks up a uh, dog poop, I guess. And eats it? it oh, the wiki says that he he eats it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Cool. <laughs> Thanks, Ash. Cool. <laughs> okay. Hashtag postmodernism. Yeah. If any new signs or omens appear anyway or in the world, then, like, his program is gonna go off. The GUI for this, like, program is, like, very good for something that he's made in only 51 hours. And, like, it has to, like, constantly be, like, checking the web, right? I wonder, like, how often it updates. Anyway, so Dean reaches for the laptop <laughs> to try to take a look. Ash is like, uh-uh, you're not touching my baby. And Dean, like, pulls his hand back and is like, yeah. Sam asks where Ash learned to do all this. And apparently he did that at MIT before he got kicked out for fighting. And Sam says, MIT? And Ash says, it's a school in Boston. <laughs> the yeah. thing is, like, the way Sam says MIT really pissed me off. Yeah. Like, he says it so judgmentally, like, mm -hmm. condescendingly. Right. And I was like, Sam? Sam. Come on. Come on. Like, you're, you're literally, like, you should know better knowing that you're... You were in Stanford, and it was like a major plot point that you didn't fit in because of yeah. class issues. 
Yeah. So, like, the fact that he's, like, being like this to uh, Ash is, like, mm-hmm. Sam. But I Sam. guess, like, Sam's perspective was more assimilation, right? Yeah. I feel like if Sam w- wasn't so judgmental, they could have connected over their college experiences a bit. But I guess not. Uh, and Dean yeah. tells Ash to give them a call as soon as they know, as soon as he knows something. Uh, he takes a sip of his beer and sets it down, and then Ash picks it up and drinks it. Like, that's Hayes code for sex, right? <laughs> Literally Hayes code. Like, they fucked. So, um, Sam and Dean head out. And Ellen says, like, hey, if you need somewhere to stay, like, I have a few beds here. And Dean says, thanks, but no, there's something I've got to finish. So, Dean is in the yard again, Bobby's yard, and he's finishing up the car. Sam approaches him and says, And you can see his nipples through his thin gray (laughs) (laughs) t-shirt. He says, Dean, you were right. And I'm sorry that the last time I was with him, I tried to pick a fight. I'm sorry that I spent most of my life angry at him. And he probably died thinking I hate him. He admits that Dean is also right about the fact that it's too little too late. And that he misses John. And he's guilty as hell. And he's not alright. But neither is Dean. He leaves and Dean paces around. And then he picks up a crowbar and smashes the window of the Impala. He starts hitting the trunk of the Impala over and over and over again until there's a fucking hole in the trunk hood. And then he stands still and we were just lingering on his face. And his lips are wobbling. He's, we're getting full acting in this scene. <laughs> and then we hear guitar sounds start. And then we cut to black. And that's how the episode ends. Yep. Should we mention the In Memory of Peter Ellis? Or is this uh, that irrelevant? I don't think Peter Ellis cares that much about what we think about his death. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope he's resting in peace. Yeah. He he directed Bloody, Bloody Mary, Mary, yeah, and and uh, the, the Benders, Benders, which were both good episodes direction wise. So. Yeah, thanks, Peter. What did you think about the crowbar scene? Um, because I mean, there is a charitable reading that like Dean hasn't been dealing with his emotions, and now that like Sam said that he's like, okay, I will deal with my emotions, but like this is how I get I, how I deal with them. But I don't think that's what's happening, right? Um. <laughs> What do you think was happening? I mean, I think he's just an angry little man with access to a crowbar. I think, like, I mean, of course it's related to the grief and everything. Hurting baby, like, specifically, is probably an act of self-hatred. I just think, like, just cry. (laughs) Why do you have to be so violent? Yeah, like, that's baby. (laughs) I thought you didn't care about the car, huh? Huh? (laughs) I... I didn't like when there was an entire hole in the trunk. Like, up until that point, I was like, whatever. And then, like, I saw that you could see through the trunk, and I was like, wait, no! Is Dean better after this episode? Like, do you think it helped? I mean, I hope so. Like, you... uh, You were set back a couple of hours, maybe, because of this hole in the back of the car. Mm. I hope it fucking helped. (laughs) Yeah, what did you think about this episode? Um, well, I sent you I Hate Supernatural in Discord three times in a row while watching it. (laughs) 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 The thing is, like, the the brother stuff are all right, you know? Like, the grief stuff are all right. Mm -hmm. The case was so weak that it takes out so much of the enjoyment that you could possibly have with this episode. Right. It's like, why do I care about any of the emotional parts? It's literally written by John Chaban, who wrote the rest of this. Uh, Okay, best line, worst line. What's your best line? Um, hmm. I liked, you know, Sam's 
ending thing, like, I miss him, man, and I feel guilty as hell, and I'm not alright, not at all, but neither are you. Yeah, it's a good line. Yeah, I, I think I'll ride on your best line. Okay. Like, yeah, like, that is the thesis of the episode, that, like, I miss him, etc., mm. and... I'm not alright, but neither are you. Like, that's the whole point of what they're trying to build up to and culminate towards. So, what does Sam miss about John? I think, you know, you can miss people, just the general idea of them. Yeah, I guess. Like, it doesn't have to be specific. Mm. What do you think is the worst line of this episode? I mean, the whole, like, freak show, honest work, blah, 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 blah. I don't even want to say it again. I really hated the part with the with uh, Barry and the little uh, person, the right. little man. Sam laughing. Like, mm. that pissed me off a lot. Yep. The fact that they were like, we have to have someone laughing in the background. Like So, like, I get not the line specifically, but just the laughter. Yeah. I hated it. The line, so ha, 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 is the worst The line, line. ha, 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 ha. Yes, exactly. <laughs> IMDb rating. <sighs> it, this better so, be low. It better be low. <laughs> uh, I, I'll go for an 8.4. Okay. Um, I will go for an 8.2. Oh my god. What? You got it straight on. Oh my god. Yay. Good. It should have been below an 8, but at least it is sort of low. <laughs> Let's see what people thought about it. I don't think I'm going to enjoy what people say about it. Yeah, I, I just I thought it would be higher because of the whole like the grief part was actually pretty yeah. good, so But I also know that a lot of fans like hated Joe at the time. Oh no. Yeah. So I I was mean like, like she she's not given much this episode. Mm-hmm. So I don't see why how someone could hate or like her yet. Yeah. You know? Like, it goes both ways. That she's she's not really, like, a character, a, full, a fully fleshed out character yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you, do you have any particular feelings about Ellen and Joe, by the way? And Ash? Like, do you have any expectations for their character? Um, I know that, like, Ellen and Joe's death scene is gonna be very emotional to watch. I guess I don't know that much else besides, like, Joe's, like, I was a freak with a knife collection line. (laughs) I thought you would enjoy the whole, like, Joe and Ellen having a drinking game with Cass. Oh my god, no, you're right. I forgot about that one. Yes, I do like that. And I like that they were, like, in the family photo scene. Yes! Oh my fucking god! (laughs) The family photo! Oh. Oh. I miss Cass so much. Me too! He's He's literally in the family photo! He's just standing there with his little face and his little trench coat! I love him so much. (laughs) Okay. Uh, the costume design in this episode gives it a thrilling effect, but it's still corny like the rest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Called corny by an IMDb user. I'm sorry, guys. One of these reviews is just titled, A Good Show. Are we sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's absolutely not. This one, so this one, right, this one review talks about how Joe eventually becomes, like, a sister figure for Dean. Yeah. So, like, the introduction feels a little off. Yeah. I think, you know, relationships evolve. It doesn't have to be, like, you see someone as a sister, as a sister figure. Like, you don't, you, you, you know what I yeah. mean. I, yeah. I don't fucking know. <laughs> yeah, like, no, yeah. relationships evolve. So, like, yeah. if it starts off, like, well, we have romantic feelings, and then later on, it's like, oh, it's purely strongly platonic. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Like, I don't see the problem in that. I think that's it for this episode of Passation Beauties. Next time, we will be talking about Season 2, Episode 3, Bloodlust. Leave us a rating or a review wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on social media. We are on Twitter at twitter.com slash beautiespodcast and on Tumblr at bustyasianbeautiespod.tumblr.com. Our official tag is babpod, 
B-A-B pod. Thank you to everyone who's donated to our Ko-fi at ko-fi.com slash bustyasianbeautiespod. You can email us any feedback, comments, or inquiries at bustyasianbeautiespod at gmail.com. See you guys next time. Bye! Bye.